Okay, this is a quick walkthrough of the pupil capture routine. I'm using uh, Mac uh, Mavericks 10.9.1 um, and the bundled version of pupil software version 0 0.35. And what I'm going to do is basically just show you how to set up and calibrate and record. And any other visualizations will be covered um, on the website or in other videos. So first thing you want to do is to make sure that you have uh, is to deal with camera settings and to make sure that the cameras are focused. Uh, I'm in a pretty dark environment so you can see that the image is pretty washed out but you can change the exposure um, just by tweaking these numbers. But before you get into that even just take a look at the raw camera image and um, try to make sure that your, your image is focused. You should get a kind of crisp uh, iris image and a crisp uh, definition of the pupil borders. So if you turn show pupil uh, position back on, uh, you can see the outline in the centroid of the pupil. Uh, next thing you want to do is, um, like I said, focus. Um, you can focus, auto focus should be off, and you can uh, change the absolute focus or zoom if you want to here. I'm going to minimize this window because I'm okay with these settings. Um, and the next thing you could do is specify a uh, region of interest. Um, we can draw a region of interest, so I'm just going to drag a window like so, and then I'm going to display the um, the algorithm. Um, so you can see a bunch of edges detected here, but the thing I want to focus on is these this red circle, these two red circles, which are the min and max uh, thresholds for um, the people detection algorithm. And right now it looks okay. I could maybe bring this down a little bit, uh, be a little bit more uh, conservative on my estimates, and maybe bump the minimum size up a little bit. So the green uh, the green circle here, the green ellipse here, is the apparent size of the pupil that is found in the image. If you want to get into looking at debugging a little bit and seeing how the algorithm works, um, you can take a look at the debug window, which I just opened by clicking here. and you can see uh, different ways in which edges are found, which edges are discarded, which edges are kept, and a histogram here of good um, detection versus no detection. And you know, for example, if I blink, right, you'll get a big, um, big gap in the in the histogram. Uh, you're welcome to explore this further. So I'm okay with the eye settings, and now I just want to make sure that the world camera is focused. Usually, I click um, autofocus until I get focused, I'm going to be using the screen to calibrate, so I want to make sure that the screen is in focus. And you can change exposure, exposure settings here, or load defaults. Um, I'm going to minimize this because I'm okay with the settings. Uh, next thing we're going to do is be calibrating with the screen marker. There's uh, different ways to calibrate. Um, manual marker uses a marker that you can move around in the environment. Um, and uh, natural features is an experimental method to calibrate um, where we use features in the in the actual environment um, around us so you can click on them with the mouse. Camera intrinsics is not uh, a a calibration method for um, eye tracking but is a calibration method for the world camera that you may want to use if you're going to be rectifying the image or doing any other um, uh, any other uh, estimations with the world camera later. Um, so first thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to calibrate on our screen. We're going to use the full screen of our monitor. If you're plugged into another monitor, you can select it here. Um, check for full screen that's default on and start calibrating. Starting calibration. So what I'm going to do is just look at the target as it moves through the screen. When the red dot in the center is on, that means it is uh, not collecting data when it's green that means it's collecting data and I'm trying to keep my head uh, pretty still I'm just moving my eye to the marker stopping calibration after you've calibrated you can take a look at the calibration results uh, by clicking here and you can get you can take a look at some of the metrics that we have um, and Recall, or just to you know, make sure you know you're actually calibrating for this surface, the surface of my screen, which is actually uh, a 
according to our, our estimation here, only um, only around 7% of the area of, or 0 0.07, and how many samples we used, etc. You can always re recalibrate if you're not happy with the results. Um, we can check our calibration just by, you know, maybe looking at my thumbnail. Or by maybe following the mouse around the screen. It's hard to see your own uh, calibration. That's why we made this uh, calibration metrics, uh, unless you record. So go ahead and close. Uh, now you're all set to make a recording. Um, the way in which we record is the recordings go into the recordings folder, and um, get each. Uh, you can name sessions by default. We name sessions uh, by the current date. Um, you can also choose to record the I at the same time. Um, and to record, just click record, and you'll see this red box pop up uh, with a running an elapsed time of how much time you've spent recording. Um, if I stop and start another recording, that's absolutely fine. We won't be um, overwriting anything. We'll just be making another folder within that same uh, session that we've just started recording. Uh, the same session that's named 2003. We can also make our own session names um, and make a recording there as well. Okay, this concludes the uh, simple walkthrough for how to set up, calibrate, and record uh, using Pupil uh, and Pupil Capture software version uh, 0.35. Um, Hope this is helpful.